Hi guys. So a few people have been expressing to me their frustration with the chat box that Shroud has requiring us to defeat him without taking 100 damage. So I decided to make this guide video really to explain how I went about doing so and hopefully it can help you guys out as well in getting that chat box to advance your masteries. So in this video I will be dividing the video itself into three parts just to make it simpler for me to explain to you guys how I went about it and also for you guys to absorb the information and this, the three stages that I'll be explaining are strategy, gear, and how I went about applying these two things. So application would be the third part. Depending on how helpful this video is, I may make it the first in a series of videos similar um, to this one explaining how I go about or how I went about getting all my kills without taking a hundred damage. So let's see how this goes but for now let's get into this video. Okay let's talk strategy right? So there's a couple of things about Shroud and moves in his arsenal that can make achieving this less than 100 damage mastery checkbox difficult to attain. And we're just going to go over a few of them that I think are noteworthy and how we can combat these, right? So the first thing is Shroud tends to move a lot, right? And him moving around so much causes the fight to drag out and that's when mistakes are made because he's throwing puddles at you, he is jumping over you and then slamming the ground, he's doing his 360, well not fully 360 but almost 360 wing swings and uh, you know he's charging at you. Um, he goes into his aether charge mode and then he's flying by and there's just all these things that can happen. And the longer the fight goes on, the more likely you are to get hit. So we want to find a way to first slow Shroud down. And this is possible with Ice Proc, by the way, for, for those that are wondering how you slow a behemoth. We need to slow Shroud down and keep him suspended on the ground for as much of the fight as possible. And we accomplish this with interrupts and staggers, right? So that's how we're going to combat him moving all over the place, by slowing him and keeping him on the ground. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is his boop, which I just mentioned. His boop is going to be an issue if we try to get it. And we're not perfect at it, because we can achieve the boop and trade blows with Shroud. That blow that you will get will cause you to take more than 100 damage. So if you're going to, you can use the strategy of avoiding Shroud's boop flyby that he does in his little dark world. You can avoid that, but you don't want to do that. You want to get the boop so we can keep him on the ground for even more burns. Trading with him though for the boop isn't going to work. But there are workarounds for this, which we will discuss later on in the video when we get over to the gear section. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about with Shroud's arsenal is his Umbral Puddles. And this is the last thing that I'm going to go over that can be a real pain to achieve that less than 100 damage. Because if you step in it and then hit Shroud immediately, you still fail. Once you step in that puddle, it's exactly 100 damage. You don't need the tick to take you below the 100. I mean, beyond the 100, right? So just stepping in that puddle, you've already failed. And sadly, there's no workaround for this. You just have to be careful. Look where you're stepping, look where you're going to land after you complete your attack for attacks that move you, such as chain blade attacks and striker karma breakers. Make sure there's no puddle where you're going to land after the attack finishes, because if you fall in that, it's over for you, right? And we can somewhat control the amount of puddles that we encounter by, again, suspending shot on the ground and keeping him there 
you know, as much as possible. If he's on the ground, he doesn't have time to be throwing and hurtling puddles at you. But yeah, so those are just some of the things that can really cause you to not achieve this check mark and some of the ways that we can combat it. So let's go over to the gear section and see how we can gear up to deal with these things that we just talked about. And then afterwards, we'll apply those. Okay guys, so to defeat Trog without taking 100 damage, the equipment that I decided to utilize was the Strikers, and I'm using the Hands of Dawn for that extra radiant damage against Shroud. I'm using Light's Crown for the Helm, Dark Marrow for the Armor Piece, Nasher's Grips, and Volcanic Threads. Now that gives me all epic cells as you can see, and that gives me the following perks, Overpower 6, which is essential for what we're trying to accomplish. We want to do as much damage to Shroud while he's down and we will be keeping him on the ground for majority of the burns. So this is nece necessary for what we're trying to accomplish. We got Rage here 100% uptime because we will be running Discipline with it. And we have Rage Hunter because Shroud will get enraged throughout the fight. There is an option if you choose to to go with Aether Hunter because Shroud will become Aether Charge as well in the fight, but I find that I get better results when I run Rage Hunter. Even though Aether Hunter does provide more damage versus Aether Charge Behemoths, but Shroud enrages earlier in the fight and twice during the fight depending on how quickly you can kill him. Um, so I chose to go with Rage Hunter. I'm also running AA or Aetheric Attunement. And that's just to give me a better uptime on my Pangar Lantern because I want that cold proc to slow Shroud so I get more burns while he's on the ground. And we're also running Berserker in one of our Technique Cell slots. And we're also running Wild Frenzy in the other Technique Cell slot. This cunning that you're seeing comes with Rezakiri Strikers. And for consumables, we decided to go with Blitz and Frenzy Tonic as always because we're trying to do as much damage as we can as fast as we can so we can get those part breaks, build that stagger bar quickly to get those staggers in. And we're running Concussion Grenades. Now this is optional. If you are good enough to get your boops on Shroud without fail, you do not need this. However, for the sake of this video, since it's a step-by-step -step guide on an easier way to get this no damage on Shroud, um, I figured I would use the concussive grenades because it is so much safer to use this versus trying to boot on your own because you, you don't want to be trading blows with Shroud when he flies by. That's going to cause you to fail your objective. Alright, so with that said, let's get into how we go about applying all this. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and apply all that we've discussed so far. The strategy that we came up with and utilizing the gear that we just equipped. In this particular hunt though, I just want to give you guys two heads up. I did Carbon Breaker Shroud and somehow the game caused me to pass through him and went off a cliff. But then it instantly corrected itself because Carbon Breaker should not have passed me through Shroud. Surge should have which I did not do. So the game instantly corrected itself. You will see that in the video. Do not be alarmed when that happened. No hacks here, people. And for those of you not familiar with Strikers, Karma Breaker applies a damage overtime effect on the Behemoth. And this means in the end, when Shroud dies, the death was due to that damage overtime from the Karma Breaker. Again, no hacks here, people. So. Let's not take a pitchfork and torches to undermine zone, okay? But yeah, so enjoy the video. If you like what you see here, please subscribe, uh, leave a comment below. Um, tell me what behemoth you're struggling to get this less than 100 achievement check mark with. 
and I will try to put out a video for you. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, guys. Happy hunting.